Yes, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, good morning. Um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> for that. Yeah, as I've been introduced, Miriam Jameson is my name, and uh, I come from Uganda, and uh, I work for Makere University Joint AIDS Program. And today I want to ask to share and look at uh, what is really happening and what we've been discussing since yesterday. When you look at, his, at what is happening, uh, you realize we are having a, a very, very big elephant in the house when it comes to adolescents and uh, young women living with uh, HIV. When you look at uh, the topic, we want to break that silence and uh, have an understanding of stigma the impact of stigma on disclosure of HIV positive status among pregnant, we want to look at the pregnant uh, adolescent girls and young women. If you have to look at the background, it is very evident that uh, the East and South Africa in the region is heavily indebted in as far as HIV is concerned, and this is according to the UNAIDS 2020. However, when you look at this, the HIV incident among the women and girls, that is between 15 and 24, it is seen as reduced to 65 since 2020. However, when you look at AGYW, it accounts for 61% of all the people living with HIV in this region. And when you look at this, this is really a very big, a big uh, gap. Two, AGYWs are at, uh, at, uh, incordant, or they are disproportionately at risk of infection, and they contribute 77% of new infections. And what does that one mean? It means quite a very, very big burden. But again, also in 2000, 2020, the egg with YWs between 15 and 19 acquired HIV infection in a single year. That is 21,000 egg YWs. Now, what is happening in sub Saharan Africa and mainly among us, this, there is a lot that is happening. Because you realize. When you look at these AGYWs, they are twice like to be living with HIV and three times as likely to be newly infected with HIV compared to their counterparts. We are looking at the adolescent boys and young men. And this is a very big burden. The risky factors, the risk factors are as follows. These are the factors that are really making these people to be at risk. Insufficient decision-making powers, insufficient contraceptive use, bad health, seeking behaviors, engaging in transactional sex, multiple sexual partners, and a number of them. But not also forgetting what is happening in our institutions like the health care institutions, and that is institutionalized stigma that is happening when these young adolescents really get to health facilities seeking for support and health services. There is existing evidence. HIV zero status disclosure is fundamental, however, in HIV prevention and care. Despite documented evidence, on the benefit of HIV positive cell status dis disclosure among partners, you realize in low and income countries, disclosure is at 50%, compared to the high income countries, which is at 79%. And this is a, a very big challenge. In the, a study done by David Kavuma, non disclosure was at 26.9%. And that is one way. And again, 
24.4 percent. That is one way, and two way at 4.8. One way we mean we are two partners in here, and again each of us is really trying to see how we all of us disclose. That is one two way, and again one way one, only one partner di discloses. Disclose of HIV positive status remains a major challenge to effectiveness of PMTCT. What are we looking at? If a, an adolescent who is pregnant does not really disclose their cell status, it is going to be a very big problem to them and again also to the child whom they are going to, who is going to be born. And therefore this puts uh, a risk. But again also it puts a risk because we've seen they, are, they have quite a number of partners. It puts risk to the rest of the partners that they are having. And the rationale is, why should we really disclose? When somebody discloses, it smoothens the, the, it smoothens the, the road of, of adherence, that is one. And you're looking at also social support becomes a little easier for us to go on. But when this is not done, it puts us at risk. It puts us at risk of really having children with, who are HIV positive, but again also having women who are struggling with the non-separation and the like. In this systematic review, what, are we inter what do we intend to do? One, we intend to have a qual quali both qualitative and quantitative uh, studies looked at, and we shall do a search. We shall look at the PubMed as we look at all those ones, and we shall also look at the literature. And this literature is going to be searched and looked at uh, between that period, that is March 1st to 30th, but also we intend to use the following terms as indicated, HIV cell status, uh, disclosure, and others. And we, shall, we intend to have an inclusion, all observation studies conducted on disclosure status among, among pregnant AGYWs in East Africa, and again, all those articles that will not be fully accessed after at least two email contacts will be primary, with their primary authors will not be included in this. What are programmatic implications? Internalized stigma contributes to psychosocial distress, anxiety, and depression among the pregnant adolescent living with HIV. Findings will inform targeted intervention and support mechanisms that will empower and uplift disclosure. They will also capacity building among pregnant and AGYW living with HIV, but again also generate updated literature in sub-Saharan Africa, in general, in the prevalence and non-disclosure among pregnant AGYWs within, within the region. I would like to thank you so much for listening to me. That is the end of the presentation. Thank you.